welcome back to the channel you guys welcome back to ironclad rc i'm big b so today we're gonna have a shop day okay so i was perusing facebook yesterday and i ran across a, a post in one of the groups i'm i'm signed into about a guy that had a motor and he could not get the solder to stick to a cut motor wire his he had cut his motor wire short for whatever reason and he could not get the solder to stick to the wire okay so i'm going to show you how to get solder to stick to a motor wire that has been cut short or broken now you got to tin you got to tin your wire before you solder a connector on okay um and you have to tin you have to solder to clean copper if the copper is dirty or coated the solder will not stick to the copper wire so brushless motors the wire is actually insulated it, each individual strand is insulated, whether they use a shellac or an epoxy type coating on each individual strand, the coating has got to be removed completely before you can get the solder to stick. Okay, so there's actually a few different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you pretty much the most basic method like i said this motor is no longer any good so i'm going to sacrifice the wire so we can actually so i can actually still make money off of this motor with views <laughs> right so it's still working for me you know so you cut your wire or your wire got broken cut in half it whatever whatever the case may be uh like I said, these wire, well, you can see I burnt my wire up. So the wires are coated. And that, that burnt coating, you see how you got like a copper color and then it got hot right here. When my motor let loose, it, it basically burned the insulation off the strands. So when they wrap up a motor, you know, the, the wires, they all touch each other in there. So they have to coat them so they don't ground out. So what you got to do is you get each individual strand. Hopefully you guys can see this. You get each individual strand and you, you take a, a razor and you scrape the coating off of the wire. It's very time consuming. You, you, you basically got to get the full diameter of the wire. You know, you can do it like this. Do all of them at one time. But you gotta you gotta get the insulation off the wire, okay? So you can do one side, flip it over, you see what it looks like. You gotta do the other side. Very, very time consuming. Okay, then you kind of resituate them, scrape some more off. Then you resituate them, kind of scrape some more off here. And you just do it until you you've got all the all the coating off of the wire. Okay. Very tedious. So you can see some copper starting to show through. You can see the coating. And then you can see where we scraped it down to some clean copper. Okay. Just got to do it until you get it all scraped off. Keep in mind, this motor is no good for me. I'm just doing this for demonstration. Uh, I would actually try to keep your, your sheath on your wire. I wouldn't really pull it all off unless, you know, you can, right? Keep the sheath on there. Push the sheath forward onto the motor. Maybe get your rubber band, clip it off, or... I don't know, maybe a, a clamp to keep the, the sheath forward so you have some room to work, right? 
if this is taking too long, get creative with it. Whenever I did it in the past, I actually used a, um, a wire wheel. Wire wheel actually does a pretty damn good job at it. So it actually looks like I got most of most of the coating off. You can see the difference in the wire. Okay. Then you know if you see some wires that need to be stripped down some more, get your razor blade and go to town with it, you know. Take your time because you don't want to cut through the wires. You need all these wires, right? You need to be able to solder onto all the wires. Okay. So now I'm going to basically line this thing up. Let's see. Yeah, it actually looks like I got most of it off. There's a few of them that that's that's not that's still got the coating left on it. Take your time. I'm just doing a 10 minute job here just to show you guys how to do it. So shit happens, you know, just fluke stuff happens to your motors. Your ESC flies out of place. It rips the end of your wire off or corrosion. You have to cut the end of the damn wire off. I mean, anything can happen cause you have to do this, you know. Accidents do happen. Ratchet extension. It had a little hole in the side. I put a screw in the side of it to plug up the hole. And we're going to get this solder stupid hot. You want to get it hotter than you think you need it, right? Because you want to melt any remaining insulation off the wire. Get it really hot. Got some flux on my wire here. Going to get the wire hot. Gonna get the wire hot. And we're gonna dip it in this solder. Keep in mind this is no good. This motor is no good to me. Get a paper towel. Okay, you see that? Got solder to stick to it. Okay, you see that? Solder stuck to it. Okay. It's the only way you can get solder to stick to one of these wires. Actually, you know what? Let me show you. Let me show you. We prepped that one up. Let's cut this one. Okay. Let's get it hot again. So this one right here has not been prepped. It's just a, a coated motor wire and the only copper that's showing is at the very tip same flux okay the only the only place this solder will stick is on the very tip you see that so I'm gonna stick it in there a little bit longer just to show you guys getting it hot let's dip it into flux again let's get it hot again get the wire hot this is the only way it's the only way I've gotten a, a cut motor wire to 10 is scraping it look at this see that 
the only tin we got is at the very end on the exposed copper you see that okay this one right here it accepted it first dip boom right boom starting to cool down so we can actually get a, a nice thick tin on it this is the one that we cleaned we got it down to some clean copper okay we got a nice thick tin on our wire okay so you can see you can actually see like up here where we didn't really scrape the wires all that well like it didn't want to stick to one wire and then the wire next to it it stuck to it pretty good because we didn't scrape the insulation off all the way up here which you don't need to you really just need you know that much wire stripped off the end of the the motor wire so you can get the solder to stick to it so you can get so you can get your connector on boom right that would that would we we would have a good solder joint if we were going to run this motor right so this one we we prepped it differently we just cut the wire we didn't clean any insulation off the wire itself we 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 fluxed it we dipped it in the hot crucible and the only place the solder stuck was at the very end where we cut the wire right so make sure i mean and this goes for anything right not just brushless motors anything make sure the wire is clean you're getting down to some good material before you solder it okay so like i said you could use a razor you can get creative and use other things the wire brush actually worked pretty darn good um the wire brush is going to scatter the wires so be careful with that i kind of recommend using the razor 90 percent of it the last 10% maybe use the wire brush make sure it's traveling the right direction before you put it on there So it don't scatter the wires too much and this will get kind of get in between some of the wires that you may have missed with the razor blade Take your time on it and you'll get a Good tinned wire. It's the only way you can get solder to stick on a coated motor wire Okay, and I just wanted to show you guys the difference here, right? so for whatever it's worth I hope this helps you guys out all right if you if you share this with a buddy that may be having the same issue that would be greatly appreciated on my end and i'm sure your buddy will appreciate it on his end you know because this this can be frustrating i mean it don't matter what soldering iron you have it does not flipping matter you're never going to get solder to stick to a dirty wire and when i say dirty i mean insulated wire it's just never going to happen. I don't care what soldering iron you have. Uh, you can use a soldering iron to tin this. You don't necessarily need the crucible. I found the crucible to be the best method. You set it in there. It heats up the wire. It burns any of the existing insulation off. And you pull it out and you got a, a nicely tinned wire. Right? So... Like I said, this is not going to be used in a boat. This is just for demonstration. Okay, so uh, we'll see you guys next time. Hopefully this helps you out. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel.